What's up guys, it's your boy Metriaptor, also known as Luxa Spatella. Welcome to another part of my Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets walkthrough series. Last time we got the final ingredient for the Polyjuice Potion. As you can see, we are now transformed into Goyle. So now we can actually infiltrate the Slytherin common room. But before we're gonna do that, I would like to mention a couple of things. One, it's another one of those days where the game decides to sort of delete itself. Fraps is also not having a good day, so there might be some lag spikes here and there. Uh, second, it is uh, what I said last time about deducting the house points of Slytherin. Well, if we go to the menu and go to our points, we can see that uh, Gryffindor has 486 points. Slytherin now has 540. This is what I've shown you last time. Slytherin is now in the lead. This may also mean that we, may not, we, we might not be able to recover from... Um, from the fact that Slytherin is actually now taking the lead and it might actually expand uh, the difference of house points between the number one and the number two spots, which may mean ultimately that Harry is not allowed anymore to go into the bonus beam room. Boo hoo. But like I said, we're going to try and change that um, with the upcoming challenges and stuff that we still have to do. We're still going to try to win the house cup, but it may just mean that... We are not eligible anymore to do the bonus beam room challenge when it comes along because once Slytherin is in the lead, oh boy, they rack up a lot of points. Um, but like I said, um, this was actually concerning the uh, trick that I mentioned about deducting the house points for Slytherin by actually bumping into a prefect all the time as you are Goyle. Um, this actually doesn't work for the PC version because there is no prefect to be found within the Slytherin common room, at least not to my knowledge. I've searched everywhere, couldn't find anything. But then I actually dug a little deeper into this and it seems that the PlayStation versions are actually a little bit different. Um, and it actually means that you actually have to distract all the prefects and then you have to sneak into the... Uh, common room or something I don't know but it means that it there's probably a bit of a mishap between you know they say like oh you can actually deduct the house points in the PC version well it's actually the PS or the PS2 version I don't know so sorry there is no way not that I've known to actually deduct the house points of Slytherin as much as I want to but uh, I guess we just have to live through it I guess so let's go back to the gameplay shall we because, well, we're still gonna go to the Slytherin common room. We're still gonna get all the secrets in there. And, uh, yeah. Let's just hope we'll get some more, I don't know, some more wizard cards, some more beans. And let's make sure we do not get caught. Also, enjoy the unique BGM. So one of the questions I get asked frequently is to actually show all the unique dialogue that you can have while you're playing as Harry or as Goyle or whatever. Um, the thing is actually is that there's no such unique dialogue so far while you're just roaming around Hogwarts. I mean, I can bump into this guy from Gryffindor. I mean, we, we could, what does he say? I beg your pardon. Uh, you see, they're, they're all rude. I'm not no magical boom, but I'm still afraid of the air. Actually, the things that they do talk about are more story related, as in how far you've actually progressed through the story. So, yeah. Must be on my way. Uh, okay, oh, hello. Pardon me. I'm, I'm from Slytherin too. Watch where you're going. Dude, respect. First time I've ever seen you alone, Goyle. Okay, now this is actually one of the uh, lines that's also said um, within the Slytherin common room. So it's interesting though that it's been set here. I beg your pardon. Uh, don't care. You're from Hufflepuff. What's where you're going? Okay, I'm clumsy, I know it. Now, another question may be, well, you're pretending you're Goyle, but you're actually Harry, so you know the password for the Gryffindor common room. And actually, it would have been interesting if they did something like that. Um, once you're actually here, you try to interact with the fat lady. You cannot. Which is uh, unfortunate. It would have been funny. I mean, think about it. If you were actually still able to actually enter the Gryffindor common room, you pretend you're Goyle, you talk to the prefect of Gryffindor, and you lose points for Slytherin. I mean, come on. Isn't that an easy way? Game, you should have allowed this. You really should have allowed this. I mean, then again, the fat lady will be like, wait, how do you know the password of Gryffindor? But then again, if she knows, then for some way she could probably alert 
I don't know, maybe Professor Snape or something? And that Professor Snape would be like, minus five points for Slytherin. Actually, no, I think S Snape wouldn't like to actually deduct house points for Slytherin. He's probably like, nope, I'm not gonna deduct house points for my favorite house. Nope. Not gonna do that. Okay, so maybe there's a little bit of sense in that. Those Cornish pixies that Lockhart let loose are all over the place now. I even had one caught in my hair. Ugh. Crazy, crazy stuff. So yeah, we have to go back to the dungeons. And again, the unique BGM, but it's all about to change because we're gonna go to the dungeons and the BGM is gonna switch. We also get a cutscene. So now we can actually understand how Harry actually infiltrates the Slytherin common room. Okay, that was short. But let's follow this dude, see what he's up to. Pure blood. What's the password? I can use that to get into the Slytherin common room. Again, the way Goyle talks, it's just amazing. Um, but yeah, pure blood. Of course, the whole mud blood thing in this, uh, in this game and in this uh, part of Harry Potter's saga. Is, is it really coincidence? Who knows? Pure blood. And again, this is one of those areas you can only enter once, so better make the most out of it. But let's continue. So here we are in the Slytherin common room. Actually, no, we are not in the common room. We are just in just a sub area. And kind of thinking like, whoa, this is kind of elaborate. How so are we not in the Slytherin common area? I mean, think about it. If we want to go to the Gryffindor common area, we just have to go to the portrait of the fat lady. It's not that far. We just say a password and then we can go through. So why is it that the Slytherin one has to be so damn elaborate? Oh well. Ah, let's uh, cast the Fendo, which is invisible for some reason, so let's try to do it again. Ah. There we go. Also, it's pretty funny that some of the gnomes are actually smaller than the, well, I think regular sized ones. Frax was, Fraps was just pooping for a little bit, but it seems to be okay. The problem is actually is that um, I have noticed that Fraps is actually just getting really, and I mean absolutely really crazy when um, when I'm actually just exploring for here. For some reason it's just that Fraps is just saying no. But anyway I just dispose of these uh, little gnomes. So apologies if there's gonna be some lag spike here and there. It's just this is just not a good day for Fraps like, like I said before. But still I want to record. Here we go. And now we have to stand in the middle of the compass yet again. And then once again, the room turns around, and cutscene. Have fun, Goyle. <laughs> wow, what a dick. But then again, he's from Slytherin. Aren't they all dicks? So anyways, pretty important that you actually cast Flippendo because then this allows for the uh, reveal of the first secret. We're gonna go save it up though. So yeah, what is funny from that cutscene is that this one little puddle of goo is actually uh, still there because the Slytherin dude actually missed to cast the Scourge Bell on it, which is unfortunate, but it has happened before in earlier playruns of mine. So it's good that uh, I can actually show it through Fraps. So this is actually a common occurrence. It's not really something that happens uh, rarely. Also, you may have noticed this is actually a jump cut because, well, Fraps does not like this area at all. This is like my 25th time 
uh, trying to record this and I'm actually not kidding and some strange things that happened between recordings suddenly I got extra disk space on my hard drive because I don't know the game crashed and as a result I got more disk space so what the hell was going on I do not know but hopefully the game will actually run smoothly now because I'm still frapsing at 30 frames per second which is amazing so I'm kind of worrying about the performance because of course I want to cover this area with a nice frame rate so it's actually enjoyable to watch. I mean, I could go through the area with two fraps per second, which makes it unplayable. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we can do this. Um, so this is the bridge that actually, because there's a pressure plate right there. So there is uh, the bridge, but it doesn't want to uh, connect or be stuck with, uh, with the goo with the Scourge Goo. And this is the first secret, as I've already shown. Now it's actually open. So yes, we get that nice distinct sound. Get rid of this bit. And let's try to do this. So there's a chest. A couple of beans. Alrighty. Eh, nothing too special. But we can push uh, these plates out of the wall with Lependo. Then we can create some more platforms. You already see that chest. Just, just chilling over there, just doing nothing. And uh, yeah, let's try to do this. So we have to go and do some more platforming. And jump over here and jump over there. Now this is not a secret, but it is quite hard to actually get there. And in this treasure chest is a silver wizard card. Now, a moment of silence, please, for one of the best audio cues or audio files from the game, which is Goyle trying to climb up something. <laughs> That's just amazing. And again. But yeah, that's uh, pretty strange. But yeah, here we go. Still frapsing at 30 frames per second. That's good. Uh, Castle Pendo. And of course, in almost every action adventure game with a bit of platforming in it, we must have moving platforms. And if you miscalculate your jump or your timing is off, well, oh boy, enjoy a bottomless pit because that's, that's what's gonna happen to you. Okay, nervous part for me, because, well, Fraps tried to crap on itself here, but now it seems to be relatively okay. So that's good. Um, so let's get rid of all the goo. And let's get rid of all the goo here. And here, most importantly. Now we can cast the pendo, and then this will happen. It's actually a dispenser of goo. And this will actually create three, well actually in this case, two new puddles of goo. And yes, you can actually repeat this, so you can actually dispense more goo, but uh, they don't get bigger. Like the, the, the goo piles don't get any bigger, which eh, I always like to test it. So we can cast Lumos, which basically does nothing else but to uh, drop ourselves down. But it's, it's okay, now we can put up the bridge and then you see the bridge actually gets stuck uh, thanks to the goo but of course me being a Slytherin dick well I have to pretend I'm from Slytherin so I'm just like screw you the next person who wants to join the Slytherin common room a uh, little bit of a bug again but the next person who wants to go to the Slytherin common room suck it you have to go through all that shenanigans all over again there you go, just to make things even worse. <laughs> just a little personal note. I mean, as I'm just tipping over these cauldrons, I am happy because I've never reached this far with fraps. I'm serious. I am happy right now. I am pretty content. Hopefully we can maintain this nice frame rate. And yeah, let's continue through this level. Ah, pixies. Uh, okay, well these pixies are having a good time, I guess. Let's just cast Lumos and see what happens. We get a cutscene and allows us the next area. 
Now you might be thinking, ooh, this is a secret, go there, Lux. I mean, come on, let's discover it. This is not a secret. You're actually supposed to go through this um, because it's actually part of the map. Because if you don't go through this, then, yeah, well, if you have to go through this in order actually to progress because this is actually the way to the common room. But uh, we're not going there because that's that will be way too early. First off, we are have to do some more platforming. Oh yes, lovely platforming. Try to enjoy that. Well, we have to cast Lumos because there's a Lumos area right over there. Lovely. So we have to cast the Pendo here and there. Open the chest. It's just such a nice party full of beans. They all have beans. It's better than nothing, I guess. 1400 beans and over. That's good. That's pretty good. Alright, so let's go back. Of course, this time the game is not so uh, generous. It's like, oh, you want to go back? You want to go back? Oh, well, I guess you just have to hmm, just just parkour your way back with Goyle. And Goyle has so many problems when he's trying to jump over things. Alrighty. We're going to cast Lumos again. We're going to walk. Uh, you may hear that the Lumos area, the next hidden Lumos area, is already discovered. It also has a distinct sound. I'm trying to get rid of that pixie, though. For some reason, um, when I'm actually recording or playing this game, it seems that the pixies are always like, there are always two pixies which are just like on top of each other, or actually just no clipping on each other. Because every time I try to get rid of one pixie, there's always the second pixie just at the same position so they're always like two pixies in one place i don't know what's up with that okay main objective is try not to die here because uh falling into that pit would mean that i actually have to go back and try to record uh the area with the bridge again and just for the record like i said i am pretty happy this is secret number three by the way i'm pretty happy that uh I have no problem so far. First I was thinking it was actually my computer, but then suddenly the game crashed while I was actually frapsing. I got more hard disk drive hard drive disk space, that's the that's the correct term. <laughs> and suddenly it works. But I had enough to begin with, so it's kinda strange why it would actually freak out on me. But yeah, like again, technical specifications, I mean it shouldn't really uh, be the main topic of this commentary it should be to inform you about how to actually try and beat this game already so that is the dreaded platforming section done we just have to do two more of those uh, there we go and there we go uh, what i meant by two of those is just two of those little platforms but that's it uh is this area uncovered yes it is this was the uh, main area but now we are actually in go through this little tunnel we are actually now in the sliver in common room so yes this is again one of these areas you can only access it once so take a good look because you will never ever ever see this again so yes you certainly are walking funny girl. i'm gonna try to unlock as many of the unique dialogue as possible pardon me well that's not really unique you're just a second year student i don't have time to talk to second year Dude, are you the same dick who just tried to lower the bridge on me? And it's really funny how they also point at some of the amazing paintings. Pardon me. But like I said, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, Hey, you should try to really unlock all the dialogue that you can get. Some unique facts or things about Goyle. So yeah, I'm trying that. Why do you look lost? This is our common room. Um, just, just no, yeah, well, I know. Happy holidays, Goyle. So. Want to break other people's presents later? Jeez, everyone from Slytherin is a dick. There's also one about Gryffindor, which I tried to unlock. You're just a second year uh, student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have time to talk to second years. I know, it's kind of annoying that I'm just bumping against the same NPC over and over again, but like I said, some people just want this. You certainly are walking funny, Goyle. Okay, maybe we'll just try another NPC. What about you? Hi, Goyle. Sup? I don't even know your name. Maybe I should, but... It's not really me. <laughs> you don't look as hungry as usual, Goyle. Jeez, they're all mean. How does Goyle even... Is, isn't Goyle just like, yo, I just want to change uh, the room. I just want to change from uh, from Sliverin to, I don't know, Hufflepuff. 
I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Goyle. Sup. Can you do that, actually? Can you just change faction if you want to? That would be funny. Looking for Draco, Goyle? Uh, not particularly. I still have a couple more secrets to unlock before I, uh, can do that, so, yeah. Hi, Goyle. Okay, so you're not interesting anymore. What about you? First time I've ever seen you alone, Goyle. Oh, yeah, and usually I'm with Crab and with uh, Draco. There's something different about you, Goyle. You don't look so cruel and stupid. <laughs> well then. Let's lock all the Gryffindors outside until Frost forms on them. That's the one I tried to unlock. I mean, what the hell is this kid thinking? Let's try to, to uh, lock all the Gryffindors outside and they'll die of Frost. Where are Draco and Crab? Uh, I know where they are, but I don't want to meet them. Actually, I don't know where Crab is. I don't think we Slytherins have anything to worry about. Oh yeah, yeah. there's also one about uh, the House Cup. The House Cup belongs to Slytherin by right. Gryffindor won't rob us of it this year. Okay, I think that's most of the unique dialogue. I think Where so. Where Draco and Crab? Okay, so now it's actually enough with the bumping on the NPCs. Um, whoa, actually, hey. Let's uh, try to get some more secrets going, shall we? First, this looks like the Illuminati. So that I get that joke out of the way. So this is a secret. You'd be thinking, what? It's a secret full of spiders. Uh, yeah. It's actually more of a shortcut between two areas. So yeah, it says here we have actually unlocked the secret. But, you know, it has a couple of beans here and there. But, like I said, it acts more as a uh, shortcut. And what's funny about this is that we're gonna actually use this shortcut very soon. You'll see why. First, flipendo switch, and then some of the bookshelves lower. And uh, we just have to climb on them. And once you get to the top bookshelf, you get rewarded with a treasure chest. And in that treasure chest is a bronze wizard card. That's lovely. Can we parkour from this one to the other one? Let's find out. Nope, we cannot. Maybe somebody else can, but I couldn't. I failed in that. Oh well. So that was the uh, bookshelf one. There are still a couple more that we can actually discover. You might be thinking, Ooh, nice. What's this? <laughs> Just a couple of stupid little spiders, that's all. Seriously, though. Hey, what's up, dude? Certainly are walking funny. Okay, okay. We've already got that one out of the way. Uh, nope, that's not the one that I want. Uh, let's think about it. Where do we go next? I think that walking... Ah, yes. Walking in here would be a good solution. First, of course, get some more beans. Let's try to get that out of the way. Thank you very much. And now that's another secret. It's the fountain. Oof, I was afraid it would actually not open there. It looks like a nice little vault or a safe. It's cool. So another wizard cart. Nice, nice. Hi, Goyle. Sup? What's the hurry, Goyle? Uh, nothing, just collecting some more cards and just trying to get looting everything from the Slytherin common room, basically. You don't look as hungry as usual, Goyle. Oh, boy. Anyways, another secret. We have to Alohomora these two uh, Slytherin symbols. We get a nice cutscene, and then we also get rewarded with a treasure chest. Walk in there, get a silver wizard card, which is very, very, very nice. And you might be thinking, oh boy, um, Lux, you got 7 out of 8 right now. And I'm thinking that is correct. I could always check, but I think I am pretty much correct in that aspect. Alrighty. But don't worry. Don't worry, I'll get the 8th and final one. First, we get some more stuff for uh, the potion, Wiggable potions. I was about to say Polyjuice potion, but no. <laughs> if you, oh yeah, I can make Polyjuice potion in like two seconds, and Hermione takes like several months to make. Oh well. You're just a second year student. Oh, Christ. I don't have time to talk to second years. Uh, I think there's some more unique dialogue with these NPCs. Hi, Goyle. Uh, no review. We'll just try it What's again. What's the hurry, Goyle? Nope. I think we've already heard that one. Hi, Goyle. Okay, you're getting very boring. There's something different about you, okay. Goyle. You don't look so cruel and stupid. 
Okay, so hmm, let's just try and and progress. Okay, if you go through this area, you will actually encounter Draco, and then you will get a cutscene, and you know you're probably thinking, oh, okay. But after that cutscene, some things are going to change, and it also what this actually means is that once you actually have the cutscene with Draco, you cannot backtrack to get any of the other secrets. So you might be thinking, wait, Lux, Lux, you missed a secret. Don't worry, I'll get it, but you'll see why. If you go here though, this is probably the ladies section, maybe the ladies bathroom, maybe the ladies uh, sleeping room, I don't know. Let's try to get there though. You don't want us to call for Professor Snape, do you? Actually, I'm not supposed to be this close because normally the NPC of Coil, the playable character, me, would actually stand around between the two pillars, probably. But it's funny, I'm actually here. You don't want us to call for Professor Snape, do you? So, some people may be thinking, oh, okay, so now you can have a peek, because normally you're not supposed to uh, be that close, I think. It's really weird how I'm actually this close. But you can have a little bit of a peek, and you're thinking, oh, there's a staircase, I see some balcony up there. Is there anything like a treasure chest, a super hidden thing? Uh, I have seen a person doing a... Uh, a debug mode of this and no there is nothing there's a staircase and there's a balcony i think but there's nothing there of importance you don't want us to call for professor snape do you so yeah it's always the same nine but i'm so it's so strange that i'm actually this close because huh let's try this again and maybe i'm actually at the correct position you don't want us to call for professor snape do you okay this is strange but then, then again like i said if you're frapsing some some rules actually change so yeah uh, let's just think for one moment. So yeah, uh, I just had to do a check indeed with the secrets. Oh, boo me. But let's do the cutscene now with Draco. There you are, Goyle. I've been looking all over for you. Come on, follow me. You know, Goyle, I suppose Dumbledore's trying to hush up all these attacks. He'll be sacked if they don't stop soon. And as for St. Potter, he's another one with no proper wizard feeling. And people think he's Slytherin's heir. I wish I knew who it is. I could help them. You must have some idea who's behind it all. You know I haven't, Goyle. How many times do I have to tell you? But I know one thing. Last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood girl died. So I bet it's a matter of time before one of them is killed this time. I hope it's Granger. Anyway, uh, Draco, I'd best be going. Going where? Uh, to the hospital wing. Yes, that's it. The hospital wing. I've got a stomachache, and I need to get something for it. Go on then. I don't want you hanging around here all night with that pained expression on your face. Alright, so if you talk to Draco, I think you always get uh, the same sentence, the last sentence from this cutscene, which says, Go on then, I don't want to look at your pained expression on your face. Um... Interesting thing I would like to mention. If you walk out here, you'll get another cutscene. And I think this is also a game-breaking cutscene if you actually try to skip it or your game crashes during that cutscene. So it's very important for me that I do not crash or that Fraps tries to do something naughty when I'm actually entering this cutscene. But before we do that, let's go here. And now we can actually go to the area where Draco Hall held us up. So now we can go, and it looks the same, I think, with the woman's uh, area. So we just have to go up there, and this counts as a secret. Now you might be thinking, oh, why, why does this count as a secret? Well, I'm going to explain. It's just that once you go out, um, once, you want, once you actually want to leave the area, not this area, you know, but you're back here with Draco and you're just trying to go to the left and you're trying to leave and like I said there will be a cutscene this cutscene um, 
actually it transformed you back into Harry. Ooh, spoilers. But the thing is, is actually then that um, you know this means that it will be very tricky to actually get all the secrets, and it will be extremely tricky to actually get up uh, to actually get that secret over there. So I think the reason why they count this area you know, this entire area as a secret is because if you forget it, then it's very, very, very difficult to actually uh, come back from it. So yeah, uh, this actually means that now I actually have uncovered every secret in the Slytherin common room. Unfortunately, no prefect that I can find to actually deduct some of the house points. So I guess it's really just in the PlayStation versions, I think. But yeah, let's just progress and uh, We'll get an interesting little cutscene. I better try to keep my distance from the Slytherins and sneak out. If they spot me in here, who knows what might happen? Who knows what might happen? Yeah, the last sentence is actually repeated because of uh, stupid shit. Now, this is like your stealth mode. Yes, I'm not kidding. Your freaking stealth mode. So you have to wait for this kit to just go away, like, seriously far away. Something not right. Oh boy. Professor Snape. He has seen me. Got him. Ah. Potter, I do believe expulsion is in order. I need to get out of here without any of the Slytherins seeing me. So yes, this is what happens when you actually lose. Ugh, also little spider, get away from me. This is what happens when you actually lose. You get this cutscene and just to show you, uh, you do not lose any house points for this. So don't be scared. It's not like, you know, you lose 50 house points or something every time you do get caught. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to see actually what happens. For those who want to see what happens when you lose, hey, I've done it. There are no bad consequences. The game auto saves. Um, once you transform yourself back into Harry Potter, so you can do this section over and over again. And before I actually do try to escape, because I need to make sure that the people don't see me, is that I would like to mention I was piss scared when I had to do this section because just think about it you have to run from all the NPCs that are in there every NPC now is a threat is a danger and since this is your only time that you're actually in the Slytherin common room think about it just you don't you don't know the area very well so how do you know how to how do you escape from this situation you're gonna be panicking like I did and you're just gonna run around and just and at some point, if you take the long way around, there are like 10 NPCs just running, chasing you. And it's so damn scary. So, uh, I'm gonna try to use my escape route. So... Something's oh not boy. Right. I always have this one dude who is trying to, uh... Who's trying to chase me. So now I have to go through this again. This little shortcut. And just keep running! Just... I swear to you, this dude... Oh no, he's not following me anymore. This is also a bit of a luck. What are you doing here we go. Here? But now I've done it. No, he can't be in here. The news that nearly headless Nick had been petrified spread through the school like a dark cloud when everyone got back from the holiday. If a ghost can be petrified, the students thought, then no one is safe. The first years moved around the castle in tight-knit groups, afraid they might be attacked if they ventured out alone. A furious trade in talismans, amulets, and other protective devices was sweeping the school. In the meantime, Harry had learned that Draco Malfoy was not the heir of Slytherin. But if it isn't Draco, and it isn't Harry, who is it? 